بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما سيدنا ومولانا وإمامنا الحجة بن الحسن المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه Another verse, another passage in دعاء الافتتاح الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره All the praise be to the Lord, to God for all his a full gratitude and thanks to God for his full bounties and blessings upon us. God's gifts and bounties and mercies and blessings upon us are infinite and endless and it is really impossible to count and this is what he says in his book God has given you from everything you asked him and were you to count the blessings of God you could not number it or count it because it is endless it's endless sometimes we pay attention to these blessings. Sometimes we don't pay attention to them. We don't see them. We don't feel them. Unless we are reminded. One of the things that we don't feel, we don't really feel. We take it for granted. Breathing. Breathing. You know how much this breathing is, is important? You know within seconds if you don't breathe, if oxygen does not go into your lungs within seconds, matter of seconds, you are finished. I remember at the beginning of this pandemic, 2020, April, I believe it was April 2020, a daughter of a very rich man, billionaire in Europe, her father died of COVID-19 she tweeted, she said, my father, who is a billionaire, died alone in the hospital. They did not allow us to go and visit him at the time of his death. He was alone. And he died of something that is free. He couldn't get it. It's a free. He doesn't have to pay money for it. But he could not get it. And that is the oxygen, the air. We take it for granted. Close your nose for a few seconds. And see how you feel. See how you feel. You cannot count. This is why five verses, five chapters in the Quran begin with this sentence Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Praise, all the praise be to the Lord, to God. The beginning of the Quran. Fatihatul Kitab, Suratul Fatiha, Suratul An'am, Surat Fatir, Surat Al Kahf, and Surat Seba. These five chapters begin with this. The meaning of Alhamd is to enthusiastic, enthusiastically, thank you, praise God, which is which is exalting extolling extolling the praiseworthy when you really from the bottom of your heart you say thank you to someone alhamd one of the meanings of hamd i mentioned the difference between hamd and shukr the very first introduction the very first night of ramadan but again one of the meanings of alhamd which is more than thanks when you sincerely sometimes you say thank you thank you you know, we walk and we say thank you. And this is good, of course. This is good. In this country, I learned this. One of the things I learned when I came to the West. 
more than 35 years ago. I learned when I went to London, we migrated to England in, in 1989, I learned to say thank you. In the East, people don't say shukran, shukran, shukran. No, rarely. They take things for granted. But in the West, they teach, in this culture, to say, to keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you. See, see how many times you say thank you. But some of these thank yous that we say are commercial. Commercial and diplomatic, not sincere. But alhamd, when you really mean it, when you say to someone thank you from the bottom of your heart. This is, this is extolling the praiseworthy, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for all the favors that he bestowed upon, upon the, the world. Therefore, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whatever we do, whatever we say, we cannot thank God properly. So how do we thank him? What is the best way of thanking God? This is what the Prophet says. Listen to the, how the Prophet thanks God. He says, Ilahi la uhsi thana'an alayk. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Allahumma laka alhamdu kama hamadta bihi nafsik. O oh God, there is no way for me to enumerate to enumerate, to count your blessings and the, 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 the praise due to you. You are, this is what he says, you are as you have appraised yourself. You are as you have appraised yourself. I cannot appraise you. I only emulate and imitate and repeat what you say. You are as you yourself have appraised yourself. كَمَا حَمَدْتَ بِهِ نفسك. Of course, Alhamdulillah, we use it. It's a, f a phrase that is frequently used and repeated to employ thanking God when we finish things, when we finish eating food, when we finish a project, or when people ask us, how are you? How do you feel? Then the answer is, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, which is highly recommended to use it. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam says, fi kitab al-kafi an al-shaykh al-kulayni, ma an'am allahu ta'ala ala abdin bi ni'matin saghurat am kaburat faqala alhamdulillah illa adda shukrah. When God bestows a gift upon you, whether this gift is a small or big. There are some gifts that are, we consider them to be small, but they are not small. And some gifts are really big, huge, huge. Then when you say Alhamdulillah, by just saying Alhamdulillah, see Alhamdulillah, two words, no more. Praise be to God, Alhamdulillah, illa adda shukraha, then you have fulfilled its gratitude. You have fulfilled the mission. God does not want you to, to say more than Alhamdulillah. He's okay with these two words. At least you pay attention. You are conscious of what God has done to you. And you acknowledge it. And you say Alhamdulillah, then it's enough. You don't have to stand and give a speech. In some countries, despotic regimes, when the king, the sultan is sitting on his throne, people come and they read poetry in his praise. Long poetry. Qasida. Long speech. Especially those ulama that are hired by the regime, you know, on payroll. And wama aktharuhum. They are thousands and thousands of those ulama who stand before the king and they keep appraising and appraising and attributing things that are nonsense. They don't even exist to his majesty. Why? So they stay in their position. They stay on payroll. Allah says, I don't want you to say this. I don't want you to give me a speech. 
to present me with a poetry or a speech. Alhamdulillah. But with understanding. Alhamdulillah that comes from the bottom of your heart. Alhamdulillah alladhi la mudadda lahu fi mulkih. Praise be to our Lord who has no opposition in his rule. Wala munazi'a lahu fi amrih. Nor there is any challenge to his authority. There is no challenge to God's authority. Nobody can challenge his authority. He says in Surah Al-Zumar, in the Holy Quran, ضرب الله مثلا رجلا فيه شركاء متشاكسون ورجلا سلما لرجل هل يستويان مثلا الحمد لله بل أكثرهم لا يعلمون. God sets forth this analogy, this analogy, which is very deep. This parable, this anal analogy. He says, a man, there is example of two men. One of them is a man who has many partners, many partners, and they are conflicting partners, fighting among themselves. They don't have peace. They don't have settlement. They don't have agreement or understanding. They are conflicting partners. This is one example. The other one, the other one, a man belonging to one man. He's working for one. He doesn't have partners. Are the two equal in likeness? This is a parable, and it has different meanings, several meanings, according to the, to the uh, uh, exegist of the Holy Quran. The first example, the one who has many conflicting partners, is a reference to the idolaters. Idolaters, how many idols they have? Several idols, not just one. In Mecca, they had several idols. And they have to bow down in front of each and every one of them. They place some at the top of the Kaaba. They place some at the Mount Safa. Some of them were on Mount Marwa. Some of them in between. They have many idols. Whereas a believer... He bows down before only one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and nothing but, but God. Now some people say, can we bow down before our, you know, commanders, teachers? In some cultures, they do a lot of bowing. Which cultures? Japanese. Japanese. And what else? Huh? Iranians, Indians, a lot of bowing. Ruku' mashallah. Is it allowed? If they don't consider that person is a deity or God or Lord, then it is okay, out of respect. This is not an act of worship. Not any bowing is considered an act of worship. Some of them are an act of respect. Respect to your father, to your partner, to your friend. It's okay, as long as you are not worshiping. So in the Islamic tradition, a believer worships only God. Only God. One God. He bows down before him. This is one meaning. And he serves only God. Another meaning of this verse is that <clears throat> an unbeliever, his heart is divided into many directions. Whereas the heart of the believer should be not divided. The heart of the believer is focused on one thing, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how it should be. Our hearts should be dedicated, our feelings dedicated only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith says, when you dedicate yourself to God, God is going to take care of your affairs. You don't have to worry about other things. Dedicate yourself only to God. Connect yourself to God. God is going to take care of your business, your family, your relationship, your health. Dedicate yourself to God. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. Also, the two parts of this analogy can be understood as representing, as representing a heart that is divided among many interests, and that is the heart of the non-believer, and the heart of the believer, which is 
only and entirely devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah alladhi la sharika lahu fi khalqih. Praise be to our Lord who has no partner in his creation wala shabiha lahu fi azamatih. Nor anything similar unto him, unto his greatness. Nothing is similar to God's greatness. And this is found only in the Islamic theology. In other theologies, God has similarities. In other religions, in other religions, God has pictures and statues. If you go to certain temples that belongs to certain religions, their deities, their Lord has an image, has an image, has a picture, has a statue, has a portrait, a painting. But God in the Islamic mosque has no painting, has no image. He's above all these images. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ He's unique. Nothing is like unto him. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ We re re reiterate this every single day in our prayers. God has no partners and no similarities. No similarities. Once you put God within the frame of, of objects, then this is not God anymore. You are bringing him down. Alhamdulillah al fashi fil khalqi amruhu wa hamduh. All the praise be to our Lord, whose will, whose command and bounties are massive and widespread and prevalent in the entire universe. Some kings, they favor certain regions in their kingdom. If people support them, they favor them, they give them. They have a prejudice. Many sultans, many kings, they serve people who support them. If you don't support the king, the sultan, if you don't praise him, you are not worthy of anything. You are deprived. And this is this happening. This is happening nowadays in many parts of the world, in many parts of Muslim countries. If you don't support the regime, you don't deserve mercy. You have to support the regime. You have to praise the king. You have to praise him. If you don't, alhamdulillah, we don't experience these things in America. This is one of the good things. You live here free. Free, alhamdulillah. You don't have to praise anyone. Do you? I'm asking you. Have you ever since you came into this land, you had to praise a leader, political leader, that you did not believe in him? Do you? You don't. You don't have. I've been here on this podium 27 years. Nobody came to me and said, say it. Today you have to praise this prime minister, this president, this mayor, this governor. Nobody said this. You speak your mind. And this is how it should be. This is how we are not slaves. But in many countries, the citizens are treated like slaves. If you don't praise the sultan, you don't. I remember during COVID-19 when they brought the vaccine to certain Muslim countries, they were having interviews in the streets. The national television, the government television, was having interviews in the streets and people were praising the king. May God bless our king, the merciful, the habab, the good, <laughs> who brought us the vaccine. As if he's brought it from his own pocket. It's the wealth of the nation. He has to. This is not his own money. This is his duty. He has to thank his nation for keeping him in the office. But they force people to come and praise the king rather than praising the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a slavery. This is a type of slavery. So God's favor is massive and widespread for all people, people who worship him as well as people who do not even worship him and they do not recognize him. He gives them. He gives to all. God is not mean. God is generous. Alhamdulillah al-fashi fil khalqi amruhu wa hamduh. Al-zahiri bil karami majduh. His glory is evident through his kindness 
الباسط بالجود يده His hand is wide stretched with generosity الذي لا تنقص خزائنه His treasuries and his resources are not exhausted Any person, no matter how wealthy he is His treasury, his savings, his wealth is going to decrease one day. He's not that generous. When he gives, he gives, but in the back of his mind, in the back of his mind, oh, I have to be careful. I have to spend to a certain limit because I need the rest of the money for me, for my kids, for my grandchildren. He doesn't give. He doesn't open all his treasuries. He doesn't. But God opens his entire treasuries to the people. الذي لا تنقص خزائنه And it does not get exhausted. It doesn't get. The only treasury that does not have a deficit in this universe is the God's department of a treasury. Does not experience any deficit. الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده This is very important here. Pay attention to this sentence. ولا تزيده كثرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما The abundance of giving and generosity does not increase him but but what? But more generosity and kindness. Unlike people. People when they keep giving and giving and giving then then the, the amount is going to decrease and then they're going to have fear that it's going to finish. And then if my money finishes, what would I do tomorrow? But God, God's giving does not decrease. The more he gives, the more he becomes generous. But is it right to say the, the more he becomes generous? Theologically, is this correct? Because the dua says, this is the dua. وَلَا تَزِيدُهُ كَثْرَةُ الْعَطَاءِ إِلَّا جُودًا وَكَرَمًا The abundance of give, uh, uh, generosity, the abundance of giving does not increase him but more generosity. Is it right to say more generosity? So God is not very generous and then he becomes more generous? I'm asking you, this is very sensitive here. It's a very sensitive point. We can become more generous. One day we are not generous. Another day, inshallah, we will be generous during the month of Ramadan. Another day comes, you will be more generous. So our generosity, our giving, our contribution fluctuates up and down according to our means, according to our mood. You know, one day we give, another day we don't give. So it's up and down, up and down, up and down. But does that the same thing apply to God? Does his karam, generosity, giving, forgiveness, mercy, bounties, gifts, do they all fluctuate up and down? Or they are steady? They are stable. Which one? And tell me, tell me if, if you think, you know, you have to tell me why. Ya Arham al Rahimin. We need answers, huh? My friends, there are certain attributes, sifat, divine attributes, that pertain to the essence, such as what? Attributes that pertain to the essence of God, al-Dhatul Ilahiya, sifat al-Dhatul Ilahiya. Pertains to his essence, such as what? <clears throat> Has nothing to do with the people. Has nothing to do whether there is there are people on earth or there are no people. Has nothing to do with that. They pertain to his essence, such as what? Ahsant, al hay God is living. God does not die. Al Hayat. God is always living. We one day we are living, the other day we are dying. But when it comes to God, He's always living. Wujud, existence, 
He is always. He is an essential existence. Wajib al wujud. We are mumkin al wujud. Possible existence. One day we exist, another day we don't exist. But God is wajib al wujud. An essential existence. There is no day that passes by, no minute, no, no second that there is no God in it or He does not exist. He always exists. So these things pertain to His essence. There are attributes, divine attributes that pertain to His deeds, sifa, af'al, af'al, sifatul af'al, such as what? Huh? Rahma, mercy, forgiveness. These are the attributes of his deeds, his actions. Merciful to us. Merciful to us. Forgiving to us. Okay? Now, does his forgiveness, this is the question, his forgiveness, his mercy, his giving, his generosity, does it go up and down, up and down? One day he's very generous, the following day he's less generous, or it is a stable? What do you think? Huh? Stable or uh, so, uh, uh, huh? Stable. Up and down? Who says up and down? Raise your hand. Who says a stable? Ahsant. You are right. Stable. Stable. But then why the dua says, why the dua Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam says, La taziduhu kathratul atai illa judan wa karama. His, the abundance of his giving increases him not but more generosity and kindness increases him why he uses increase if, if it is a stable there is no room to increase because it's stable doesn't go up and down increase and decrease when it is fluctuates so why no this is not the answer God's the divine attributes of the deeds, remember this, sifatul af'al, forgiveness, generosity, giving, mercy, they are a study and a stable. God is not like us. We are different. We fluctuate. We are not a stable. We are moody. God is not moody. Nothing changes God. From the beginning where he has no beginning, Till the end where he has no end. He is exactly the same. His knowledge, exactly the same. His mercy, exactly the same. His generosity, exactly the same. But then, we are the one who see it increasing or decreasing. The day, the day God does not give me, I say, God is not merciful to me. The day he gives me, he gives me abundantly. I say, wow, God is so generous. Don't you say that sometimes? You don't say God is generous when you don't receive anything. Do you? You don't. The day you lose, have you ever seen someone losing his business, his money? He says, God is generous, alhamdulillah. He doesn't. But the day he receives something, a gift, he makes money, he says, alhamdulillah, God is generous. We perceive it fluctuating. Otherwise, it's a study. It's a relationship. The increase and the decrease is not in relationship to God. It's in relationship to our own perception. Ahsant. Barakallah. He deserves buqlawa tonight. So, it depends on the way we see it. Sometimes it's very evident, very clear. It's visible. We see it. Sometimes we don't see it. But it doesn't mean it does not exist. He's always generous. He's always merciful. He's always forgiving. Some way, sometimes we pay attention to it and we say, wow, God is forgiving. God is generous. God is beautiful. Sometimes we don't pay attention to it. Otherwise, God is always. Let's conclude with this verse. Allah yabsutu rizqa liman yasha wa yaqdir. We're going to read this verse during the Nights of Qadr because the Nights of Qadr is, is the night where your life, your age, and your livelihood is determined by God, your budget, your sustenance. 
the provision of God is determined during the night of Qadr. So this is one of the verses we're going to read. Allah, it is the Lord. Allah yabsutur rizq. He outspreads the provision. Liman yasha, to whomever he likes. Wayakdir. But sometimes he straightens. But it is not arbitrarily. He doesn't like this. He doesn't give him. He likes that. He, there are reasons for that. Sustenance. One day we have to speak about what, what are the reasons for, for being qualified for God's provision? What are the things that expedites God's provision on you? And what are the things that prevents God's provision? There are reasons. One of the things that tightens the risk you know, tightens the risk, committing sins. A person comes to the imam, he says, my business is down. My business is down. Pray for me. Imam says to him, alayka bil istighfar. Go and repent. Go and do a lot of repentance. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa qalati al-yahud, surah al-ma'idah, yadu Allahi maghlula. The hand of God is shackled. Ghullat aydihim. God answers them, he says, your own hands are shackled. وَلُعِنُوا They are cursed. بِمَا قَالُوا بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ The hand of God is not shackled. It is out, stretched. يُنْفِقُ مَا يَشَاء He bestows as he wills. God bestows as he wills, but for reasons. When he gives you, he gives you for a reason. When he decides not to give for some period of time, again for other reasons, which we will be discussed, inshallah, discussing, inshallah, in the future. Inshallah, tomorrow also the program begins with Dua al iftitah at 8.30, and Thursday, Friday, and Saturday begins at Iftar, inshallah, the Salat and the Iftar. Let's recite Dua for Sister Sakina Sharifi. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ يَا اللَّهُ مُنَّ عَلَى مَرْضَانَا بِالشِّفَاءِ وَالْعَافِيَةِ تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا صَلَاتَنَا وَصِيَامَنَا وَدُعَاءَنَا وَقُرْآنَنَا فِي هذا الشهر العظيم وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد